Peace be with you. Welcome to another exciting episode of The Dean Show. Subscribe if you've not subscribed already. My next guest, baptized at a young age of 11, accepted this dean in 1991, shortly later, and then not only accepted it, went on to get a master's in it. Get ready to meet Mr. Joe. Actually, Shake Joe here on The Dean Show. We'll be right back. This is The Dean, The Dean Show. This is 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 the Dean Show. Peace be with you. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa Mr. Show, Joe, Sheikh Joe. Some people call you Joey. Uh, only my grandmother <laughs> and my aunt. Mr. Joe, Sheikh Joe, how are you doing? I'm great. Just Joe is fine. My good friend, um, Dr. Brown. Yes. You know him? Yes. He actually, some time ago, uh, he had told me he was good friends with you and that I should get in contact with you. And alhamdulillah, I didn't have to look far. You actually ended up in Chicago. Yeah, we just ran into each other. Yeah, you, yeah. See, you see how Allah makes things happen. Alhamdulillah. All right, alhamdulillah. So tell us now, I mentioned when I opened the show, baptism. Yes. Now, that's what you do when you're from the Christian Catholic religion? Uh, well, most Christians will, will, will baptize, Catholics baptize at birth. Um, uh, Protestants usually will baptize later in life because it's a choice. You have to choose to be saved. Uh, so around the age of 11 or 12, um, I was attending a Southern Baptist church in the neighborhood that I lived in in Charleston, South Carolina. Uh, and. Um, I just decided that that was the thing that I wanted to do. Jesus got baptized and I needed to get baptized too. And so I uh, asked the pastor if he could do it. He said yes and get my parents' permission. And I did. They allowed it, but they refused to attend. Uh, and then uh, he convinced them to at least, you know, attend. And, and then that was, that was it. I continued in, you know, vacation Bible school and Sunday school and all that good stuff uh, as, as a kid. What does it mean? Get us more familiar with a baptism. What does it mean? You said uh, Jesus was baptized? What is that? How do we look at it from an Islamic perspective? Well, so uh, Yahya alayhi salam, or John the Baptist, um, was, was known for baptizing people. It was a symbol of washing away their sins and for them kind of, kind of like when one of us takes shahada. And so it was this renewal of life. You go into the water, you come out a new person, you're washed of your, of your sins. And so the concept is there in Islam, as the Prophet ﷺ told some of his companions, uh, Do you not know that Islam wipes away everything that came before it? So the idea of baptism is the same, except that, of course, in, in baptism, they say, we baptize you in Jesus' name, and it's this dedication to the life of Jesus. Mm -hmm. So I was inclined to that because I was the kind of the church-going one in my family. Now, you, you said you're from, where, where were you born again? I was born in Detroit, Michigan. But you were sp speaking some other language. I was speaking Arabic, yes. But you're not Arab? I'm not Arab, no. What's going on here? <laughs> <laughs> That's what everyone wonders. Okay, because I, I, we're trying to connect. Especially we, in airports. We have a lot of not yet Muslims out there, and they're like, okay, he's not one of us. He's the other. What's he doing speaking? He's not speaking English, uh, Anglo-Saxon. He's, <laughs> he's speaking Arabic. He's an Arab. Right. What do you have to say? So I learned uh, Arabic um, after I accepted Islam at the age of 15. When I was kind of church going as a kid, off and on, going with neighbors and things like that, I always knew that the Bible had been written in a language other than what it was revealed in. You know, it was written in Greek and Latin, but Jesus wasn't Greek and he wasn't Latin. He was, he was a Middle Eastern, he, and he was a Middle Eastern person, and he spoke Aramaic. So I wanted to learn Aramaic. And then when I heard about Islam and I became Muslim and I said, what language is the Quran written in? They said it's written in Arabic, the original language it was real in. It blew me away. I was like, this is great. I need to learn Arabic. So I started attending Sunday school uh, at the Islamic Center of Northeast Florida, mm -hmm. uh, there in, in Jacksonville, Florida. That's amazing. So that's just, so. First, you wanted to. Uh, you mentioned something that uh, Jesus was Middle Eastern, so he wasn't. Many people in the South, for you know, in some of the churches, they have a man with uh, blue blonde eyes, hair, blue blonde eyes, hair. Yeah. That's not the reality. Well, we don't necessarily know exactly what he looked like. We do have um, a hadith from the Prophet ﷺ explaining that he was a brown-skinned person with curly hair. It came down to his, uh, uh, his shoulders. 
he had broad shoulders. The description very much fits what we would consider to be Middle Eastern. So he's definitely not Caucasian, definitely not European in origin. Even there's what you're saying uh, to the same thing, it's in the Bible, mentions it more of a dark, uh, complected... Uh uh, person. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So then the other thing is you wanted to, it just like someone out of their sincere, earnest desire, they want to get close to God. Mm -hmm. So now they want to go back and look at these scriptures and speak the language to get closer to God that Jesus would have been speaking, which was Aramaic. Mm -hmm. Then you come to Islam and now the sister language is Arabic. Is Arabic, yeah. And you actually go on to study and you get your master's degree. Is this right? Yes. Yeah. So I started Sunday school. I actually learned the Arabic language in the United States. Um, to read, write, and speak. Uh, I have to give, uh, you know, uh, thanks to Allah and then thanks to one of my first teachers, uh, the Fakhar Ali Shah, who was the Imam of the Masjid at that time. Kind of gave me the fundamentals and I was able to run with it. And uh, and then I and, and later on in 1999, I went to Medina, did my bachelor's, master's, and then uh, have been, you know, working ever since. But hold on, what's going on? You're baptized at 11. Mm -hmm. What are you doing in Medina? At what age is this now? 24, 25. What happened here? Yeah, so, uh, you know, accepting Islam at the age of 15, finishing up high school, you know, it was the beginning of the 10th grade year, people told me, you need to go and learn Islam, you need to go to the Muslim world. Uh, there was a, a, an elderly brother named Curtis Shabazz, may Allah have mercy on him. You know, he sat me down, he was a cancer patient, uh, and, and, and he, he would drive all the way to the masjid with his wife and be so weak, he couldn't even come inside the door. So he would direct the car in the, the direction of the Qibla and he would pray in his car. So I used to go out and sit with him in his car and he said, look, you have to go and learn this deen and take it back to the people. Uh, so I want you to you know, go to overseas. So I started applying for everywhere. I applied for Azhar, Al uh, uh, you know, Medina, and Alhamdulillah, eventually I got into Medina. But I'm talking about someone right now, not yet Muslim, you know, our brothers in humanity, uh, many of the Christians who we never want to disparage on, but they're like, hold on, was he not full of the Holy Ghost? Uh, if you don't accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, they die for your sins, mm -hmm. you're going to hellfire. So you, they're saying you took a wrong turn now. You, you, maybe you found the Antichrist. <laughs> I, Have you heard some of these things? Yeah, I, you know, uh, so, you know, in, I believe it's in Corinthians, it says God is not the author of confusion. So faith should not be, faith should not be confu confusing. Um, you know, the devil cannot stand on a, on a, on a, on a, 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 or foundation cannot stand on some people by the, I forget the scripture about. I know which one you're talking about. You know yeah. which one I'm talking about. So, you know, this idea that it's the Antichrist, Islam is from the Antichrist or the devil doesn't make sense because Islam preaches against the Antichrist and against the devil. So it necessarily, couldn't necessarily be from that origin. Yeah, so what had you leave? Because you got baptized. That's right. a serious. And, and again, why do people, at what age, why do you, uh, what, uh, describe the baptism. What, what, what's done here? You just dipped in the pool and now you're born again? So there's, there's, uh, there's water that's usually bl blessed by the pastor or the priest. Uh, and then you wear all white gr uh, garbs, much like a thobe that, mar uh, that, that Muslims would marry, I mean, that was Muslims would wear. And then you, um, you, you, uh, you go into the baptism pool and the priest will hold a cloth over your mouth to protect your nose and mouth, and then hold you by the back of the head, dip you into the water, and he'll be saying, you know, uh, prayers and, and, and blessings, and then bring you back up, and then he'll say, you know, you're baptized in Jesus' name, and you have started a new life, you know. You're not gonna be a perfect person, but you've started a new life. Okay, our audience wants to know, we're, we're gonna find out, like, what is it that really, at the end, you end up went from baptism, and what was it that triggered you to come over to this way of life that actually Jesus lived, mm -hmm. that Moses lived, that Abraham lived. We got a lot more to talk about with Mr. Joe, Sheikh Joe, here on The Dean Show. Don't go anywhere. Islam says love all mankind. That's why we're sharing this message because we want the best for you and we want the best for all mankind. Please subscribe to The Dean Show. Follow us on our official Facebook and Twitter pages in the links below. Please also help support The Dean Show by making a donation in the link below. Back here on The Dean Show, Okay, so now, before I even get to that, you know, we're talking about a, a subject that many people are apathetic towards, mm -hmm. you know, religion. They think it's something weird. Um, many times you have a lot of weird things, mystical things associated with it. Why is this subject so important? Everyone needs a, uh, you know, everyone needs a moral code to live by. Um, and the thing is, is that human beings are limited in our comprehension, in our knowledge. So we can't do it alone. And if we recognize that, you know, tracks on the beach mean someone were wa was walking there, waves in the ocean means, you know, that, that there's a current, stars in the sky, 
You know, all of these things, should it not tell us that there's something that made all of this and that made us? And so if we want to know how to live a moral life to the fullest, I'm not saying that people that don't have faith can't be moral, but if we want to live a moral life to the fullest, then we need to know what the creator of the heavens and the earth wants from us. And, and that's why, you know, religion is important. How about if someone said, can't, like, science dictate my moral code? Science is empirical. Science is about, uh, is about the gathering of facts. It does, it's not philosophy. Uh, it, it's, 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 not, uh, it's not ethics. Um, and so, it, you know, you can, li you can uh, work within a certain amount of facts, but that doesn't, that doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to use those facts or that data that's in front of you correctly. Uh, we know that the Qur'an is a book that's tamper-free, tamper-proof, revealed over a span of 23 years. It has a challenge, you know, if you want to disprove that it's not from God, do this, this, and that. Mm -hmm. It's based on reasoning, rationale, calls people to think, ponder. So, you know, a lot of times when you talk to people of other religions, they'll talk about, I had a dream, you know, this came over me. Right. Um, and a lot of weird things, right? Is that what happened to you? Is that why you came to Islam? Did you see some, something in a dream? Did something weird happen to you? What was it about Islam that had you come over? So I was, uh, I was um, uh, at home with my older sister and uh, I went to her room and she had a magazine and she said, here, you know, read this magazine, do something with your life, you know, older mm -hmm. sister. Uh, and, and in that magazine there was an article about uh, a girl who had accepted Islam. She, it was a reader's column, so she wrote in about the most amazing thing that happened to her in her life. And, uh, and it was becoming a Muslim. And so I read that article and I had never heard about Islam before. Uh, I had heard about Arabs being from Detroit, but I had not heard about Islam. So it piqued my interest and I went into the encyclopedia. And this is pre-internet, school libraries, public libraries, trying to find information. So I spent, that was when I was 14 years old. So I spent the time from 14 to 15 just looking for information about Islam. Uh, do you also, did you find that appealing at the same time that you didn't have to leave this love for Jesus that we also in our faith we believe and love Jesus is one of the mightiest messengers of God except we don't worship him as a God that was actually surprising to me when I came to the masjid for the first time uh, when I went to the Islamic Center of Northeast Florida it was Sunday school time I was talking to people and they were like you know Jesus and as soon as they said Jesus I was like hold on am I in the right place because I was tired about hearing about the deification of Jesus. So I wanted to make sure that I was, you know, I said, Jesus worshiped God, I only want to worship God. And they said, yeah, don't worry, that's, that's what Jesus d did and that's what we do. So you had, a, so going back, you had a problem with that. Your fitra, what we call it now, the innate nature was rejecting this man worship? Yeah, I mean, you read, you read, you know, all these stories in the Bible about, you know, Abraham worshiped God and Moses worshiped God and Isaiah worshiped God and, and, and then you get to Jesus and he worshiped God. And then there was this break, okay, now Jesus is the Son of God, or Jesus is God, or Jesus is Son and God, which didn't make sense to me. I remember going to my pastor as a child and saying, if Jesus is God and Jesus is the Son of God, how can you be your own father? And he just patted me on my back and said, son, you just have to have blind faith. And that was actually, it was after um, baptism, and that's when I left the church. I started looking for another church to go to because it just didn't make, it didn't set, sit well with me. God is not the author of confusion. Why am I confused? No answers. It's a bottleneck. Don't think about it. If God endowed me with an intellect, I should be thinking about what I'm doing. That's, uh, that's a, uh, the antithesis to a myopic way of thinking. Now just being restricted to maybe what your parents are on, mm -hmm. just following blindly culture and society, and you went against the odds because now you went up against society and the norms and but you were sincerely earnestly wanting to know the truth and even though you're going to probably catch some heat for it did you i did a little bit yeah yeah uh, my, my 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 parents were not really sure what it was i was into um you know my friends at school were kind of strange but i my real good friends are friends until this day yeah yeah uh, we know nowadays, what are some of the most common, give me one of the most common questions you might get asked when someone finds out you're a Muslim, maybe an old family friend at a family reunion or something like that, mm -hmm. or just someone that comes in, sees your white, says, man, this guy's not Arab or something, but he's Muslim. I'm not Arab also, I'm, I'm American born here. Right. So what, what, would, uh, what do they usually ask you? I think it's surprising to a lot of people that they're, you know, they kind of in, in, they associate Islam with being South Asian or Arab. And it's shocking to them, and I think it kind of breaks that, that mold of, or that false idol of Islam being foreign. Uh, no, Islam is just as, 
is 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 a a, a religion that has been here in the United States for centuries and, and will be. Uh, we mentioned blind faith. The pastor was it telling the priest mm -hmm. telling you just got to have blind faith. Yes. If someone says, well, that's how all religions are. You just got a blind faith. What would you and they attribute that same thing to Islam? What would you say to them? I would say no. Um, if you read the Quran, one of the things that uh, that 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 really struck me about the Quran is that in every set of verses you'll find ponder this, think about this, contemplate this, look in the heavens and the earth, look at the signs that God has given, think. So there's this, this, this enticement to, to, to use your rationale and to use your intellect to, to, to base your faith upon. Uh, so but someone says, look, uh, you just you missed the boat because now you don't have someone there to carry your sins. Mm -hmm. Jesus paid the price and you just left all that. You're going to hell for that. What are you going to tell them? I would say that the, 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 the problem with thinking that you're, cert, you're, you're, you know, even in Christianity, that's a very popular notion, but that's not even what Christian fathers say. Many of them will say that we don't enter paradise because of our sins or because of Jesus. We enter it because of the grace of God. And as Muslims, we believe very s similar that but we, the thing is, is that we don't, we don't say with certainty that we're going to heaven or going to hell. We say that it's the will of God because He created us and He knows best how to judge us. So the idea that um, I'm somehow uh, forced out of heaven because I don't have Jesus to save me, well, who would save Jesus? Who would He call on? If He called on someone, then I should call on that same person. And that's what He did. I get amazed. You know, the, obviously, the Lord's Prayer. Yes. Would you say it's so similar to the Al-Fatiha? I would, yeah. Uh, you know, it, it just call out, uh, oh, our Father who art in heaven. If you just say, oh, our, 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 our um, creator or um, our, our uh, Lord, our yeah. Lord mm -hmm. who art in heaven, how does the rest go? Uh, hallowed be thy name. Them come, thy will, thy will be done. Yes. Was he doing Islam and was he a Muslim, mm. Jesus? Yes, of course. Uh, how, when you first, when you found that out before we go to break, how, someone said, how is that? That's impossible. How was he a Muslim doing Islam? What well, would you say? well when, you, when, you, when you submit to God, you're a Muslim. So everything that submits to God is, is Muslim because Muslim means the one who submits their will and their life to God. Beautiful. Exciting. I'm excited with Mr. Joe, no, Sheikh Joe here on the Dean Show. We'll be right back with more. Don't go anywhere. Islam says love all mankind. That's why we're sharing this message because we want the best for you and we want the best for all mankind. Please subscribe to The Dean Show. Follow us on our official Facebook and Twitter pages in the links below. Please also help support The Dean Show by making a donation in the link below. Back here on The Dean Show. Now, many of us who live this life, um, we see that things just kind of get played out jaded real quickly. Mm -hmm. You know, you just wake up. It's kind of a what's that movie? Gopher's Day. Uh, you, it was a, a, a it. way back in the day. It was like he uh, just keep uh, uh, repeating the same thing over. Oh yeah, over the Bill Murray movie. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and and many people just keep doing the same thing from uh, Monday to yeah, it becomes monotonous. But monotonous, you know. Um, but here, uh, I want to share one one verse from the verbatim Word of God, the Quran, and I want you, since I we have an opportunity to be with someone. Uh, who studied in the Islamic University to, to share your thoughts with us because I often, this is one of my favorite verses from the Quran where the Creator is saying in chapter f uh, 57 verse 20, know that the life of this world is but play and amusement and diversion, adornment and boasting to one another and competition and increase of wealth in children. Like the example of rain whose resulting plant growth pleases the tillers. Then it dries and you see it turn yellow. Then it becomes scattered debris. And in the hereafter is a severe punishment and forgiveness from Allah and approval. And what is the worldly life except the enjoyment of delusion? I mean, I just, you know, coming back also from those days where you just live for this dunya. What, this is so powerful. What, what, how would you uh, just summarize this, this first? First thing that comes to mind when I hear this verse is the cyclical nature of life. You can be in a cycle that you think is never ending. And, and I know that I've been there in life where I didn't really know what the next day was going to be, what the next month was going to be, and, and, and what I could expect out of life. You get to the point where you think, well, am I going to live to 30? Am I going to live to 40? I don't know. What's going to happen after that? Whereas the example that's given in the verse is that what you're experiencing right now will end. 
and you have to be prepared for it. So don't be deluded into thinking that this life is going to be forever and that there's nothing after it. You have to be responsible for your own deeds. You have to have uh, accountability for yourself and you will be accounted for uh, one day. Uh, and, and when you realize that, you realize that in reality, you know, uh, this life is not about the material that you have, but it's about the meanings that you leave behind. Usually when we hear these stories, it's really inspirational. And I've, uh, alhamdulillah, thank God, I've interviewed so many people that have come over to this way of life because it's a, it's, it's, it's a rational thinking man's deci uh, decision that you make. You don't just make, did you, you, did you just make this based off emotion or did you really, I mean, use your... No, I, I, took a, I took a year, I mean, a reading off and on. Can, you know, I said to myself, well, Islam seems like it came after Christianity. Maybe something else came after Islam. I started researching Shintoism and Jainism, Sikhism, and all of the Eastern religions that I had never been exposed to. Um, and every time I contrasted and compared, Islam came up on, on top. Mm -hmm. uh, whether it was justice, whether it was beauty, whether it was uh, devotion, whether it was prayer, whether it was duty to parents, uh, Islam always came up on top and that's what motivated me to become a Muslim it wasn't the thing of saying the certainty of just saying yeah I'm saved in Jesus's name and then going out and just wiling out the entire week mm -hmm. right but it was I have to be a responsible person in myself I have to be regiment I have to be uh, accountable for myself and when I'm accountable for myself and you're accountable for yourself then even just from a secular standpoint society is better off so you know faith adds to society in the sense that it gives every person a regimen and a personal responsibility so that they can be a contributing member to the general welfare of society and they'll get their reward in the next life as well. We mentioned, I asked you about Jesus being a Muslim. He obviously never heard this word Christian. Um, if you brought him back today, you know, he'd be like, uh, what are you talking about? I was one who submitted to the will of God. That's i.e. a Muslim, mm -hmm. just like Moses, Abraham, they were all Muslim, Abraham, same thing. And they were doing Islam. Uh, Islam, you said, we could say that this is also the lifestyle they were living. Yes. Right? From the beginning, we can put it all together from the very beginning, the first man, Adam, until the last and final message of Prophet Muhammad, with all the prophets in between. Of course. How can we do that? How can we do that? Yeah, because most people, when they look at Hinduism, they mm -hmm. say, okay, this came before Islam, they think. Uh, Christianity. But w when I tell people, look, Islam, when you define it, submission to the will of God, it was the first original religion. Well, it's the theory of history. Okay, so. We don't have, in, you know, in, in Islamic thought, the theory of history is that everything started off with guidance from God and then diverged from there. Whereas in other theories of history, they say, well, everyone was searching for the truth and they, they all have variant origins. And then we say, no, the origin was one. God has always sent guidance to people. And that's why you'll find people that, say, for example, are from the Indian subcontinent and other parts of the world, they'll say, we have these indications of the oneness of God and there being someone sent very early on in our religious scriptures. And then it was, you know, uh, uh, people that came after that uh, priests and pundits and sadhus and all these that changed these type of things or added or subtracted. And that's why you have the final prophet Muhammad because he came to, to, to as a criterion for what had come before to say this was right from it, this was wrong from it, and now here are the general principles that you live by until the day of judgment. Tell us now, you obviously... You, cl you were climbing and you're still climbing the spiritual ladder, meaning that you're seeking knowledge. This deen requires work and effort. How important is it for many of the people who take it for granted? Mm. They don't like to you know, stay at their job position in school at a certain level. They, you just want to keep climbing, but you see like Muslims today, they don't see the value of seeking knowledge and climbing that spiritual ladder. Right. Uh, you know, it's, um, it, you, you give a great example. Many times we, we endeavor for the best in, our, in our, our line of work. We endeavor for the best in, in our personal enjoyment. But when it comes to our faith, then we, wondered why, we wonder why we're depressed. We wonder why we're worried. But if we, if, we, if we do endeavor to be the best, even as a person of faith and even in worshiping God, then we can start to free ourselves from those negative emotions, not rid ourselves. And that's a completely different thing. Uh, two pieces of advice. One, for now, the Muslim, the one who's chosen constantly. And, and again, Islam is not something inherited. You've got to make that conscious decision. Oh, definitely. Uh, many have, have still gone through the rituals. Maybe their family, you know, uh, just brought them up. But they still, they're, they're confused. Many are going towards this whole new trend. It's mm -hmm. these trends, atheism, new atheism, right? Yeah. So the Muslim who's tuned in and he's like, he likes what you have to say. He's impressed. He's like, what this guy, you know, he's American, born here, was Christian, baptized. Went to study overseas, got his master's degree. He's lost, he's confused. What advice would you give him? I would say that no one can 
no one can solve the problem or the dilemma that you have in your mind. You have to think what you're dedicated to. The problem is with many Muslims that take their faith for granted, they're many times taking it as a part and parcel of their ethnic identity, their cultural identity, just something that they grew up with. And you have to say, is, if this is part of me, I should understand it. If I claim to be an engineer, I should know engineering. If I claim to be a Muslim, I should know Islam. And last piece of advice for the not yet Muslim, because everyone has the potential to submit to the will of God, and that's all that Islam is, submission to the will of God. But he keeps seeing all these crazy things that the media is showing him. Mm -hmm. He's scared. Right. <laughs> and you know what? It makes sense, the pure monotheism and all the other things, what we're saying. But again, all of these negative stereotypes that he's got in his mind, she's got in her mind, what would you say to him? I would say remain open to the truth. Do, don't, don't take things uh, at face value. Do your own research. Think about it yourself. You're an individual. You have your own mind. And be open-minded to learning about things and to becoming a better person. And when you do that with, with sincerity, then God will guide you. We're out of time, but tell us we got some more time a, uh, about your book. And Yeah, so this is uh, Simple Zakat Guide. Uh, it's a book that I wrote for, you know, one of the five pillars of Islam is Zakat. Many Muslims are mystified by it because it has to do with money and how do you calculate it. Either you find a pamphlet in the masjid that isn't descriptive enough or you got a voluminous work by a scholar that's two, three volumes you don't have time to read. So I made this simple book with uh, worksheets that people can go through step by step, understand how they can fulfill their duty to their fellow man and giving back to the communities that they live in. Uh, besides selling, sending salams to, to everybody out there, to peace, you want to send peace to our brother who... Uh, uh uh, Dr. Lawrence Brown, have yeah. you seen him in a while? I haven't seen him in a long time. So, okay. yeah, Salaam Alaikum, Doc. Salaam Alaikum, we start with peace. We end with peace. Peace be with you. Salaam Alaikum. Thank you so much. Thank you. And that was Mr. Joe, Sheikh Joe, here on the Dean Show. You can check him up at his website, get his book, and also 100% compliance for your wills. And when we say Sharia, man, this is the law that Moses bring. This is the law that all the messengers of God call people to. Purpose of life, why you're here, why you've been created. You want to know if you just popped up on the moon, what you were doing there. So what are you doing on this earth just to attain a lot of wealth and money? And then what, you die? Just heard a story, you know, a true story, a man of million, $20 million, friend of the family, he died. He left all, you think he took any of that money with him? He took, he left it all behind. So what are you preparing for your trip? That trip that we're going to take after we leave this life. Everything's become a past tense, been there, done that. But see, the intellectual person, he's not my, myopic, see? He's not narrow-minded. He's thinking ultimately of what comes for infinity. And that's the next life, that all of these messengers, they call people to think about, to reflect over, to be accountable for what they're going to do in this life, and to attain the next life by obeying the commands of God, by being good, doing good. And that's all built on that pure monotheism that Jesus was upon, that Moses was upon, that Abraham and all the other messengers, including the last and final messenger sent to mankind, who I'll end, I'll end with this story, this, this, this authentic hadith, where he described him as, as a beautiful brick house, beautiful man, a beautiful house that everybody was just going around and, and adoring. They said, but look, look, there's just a little piece, of, a brick missing here. What, why, what's, what, what's with that? He, he said, that's what I represent. He was the finality, finishing the completion of this house, this messengership. And he's the last and final messenger sent to mankind. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Get to know him. Get to know Islam. Get to know the truth. Call us 1-800-662-ISLAM and subscribe if you haven't already. Time is over. We'll see you next time. Until then, peace be with you. Islam says love all mankind. That's why we're sharing this message because we want the best for you and we want the best for all mankind. Please subscribe to The Dean Show. Follow us on our official Facebook and Twitter pages in the links below. Please also help support The Dean Show by making a donation in the link below.